year you have such amazing horror movies coming out, like The Thing and Friday the 13th Part 3, which introduces the Jason mask. And then you get Halloween 3, Michael Myers is back. Ew. Irish witches coming for your children. Woo! <laughs> Welcome to After the Hype. Your host as always, Brian Dressel. With me as always is Cherry Darso. Always after my lucky charms. <laughs> That was not what I expected <laughs> at all. Jonathan Hart is here. Yep. <laughs> Again, not what I expected at all. And special guest this week from a multitude of areas over the ATH Podcast Network, Mr. Brock Holiday. Hi. They're actually warlocks, not witches. Oh, whatever. It's called Season of the Witch. You know what I meant. <laughs> uninvited. Uninvited. <laughs> We're going to lose that feed real quick. So much for Brock being on the episode. And isn't it just one warlock? I honestly, I don't know. I really started tuning out at the end. And I actually, someone enjoyed the movie. So what does that say? Um, the only non, non-robot non was a warlock. Okay. Everyone else was robots? Yeah. yeah. He even I said thought there was that. a few humans I mean, in there. It was just the one dude? Just the, yeah, just the one guy. Wow. Everyone else was just so much more obedient. I really Man, I imagine the workday would suck. He'd be like, here's a joke. And then we'd all just stare at him. <laughs> Laugh. Ha, ha, ha. Ha, ha, ha. Mm-hmm. Good one, boss. Oh, <laughs> we love working for you, boss. Uh, so this week is, well, not this week, today. It's Halloween. Happy Halloween. Happy Halloween. Yeah, I don't remember what the song went when it was actually Halloween. Happy, happy Halloween, Halloween, mm-hmm. Halloween. Mm-hmm. Happy, happy <laughs> Halloween, Silver Shamrock. Silver Shamrock. Woo! Scared yet? Oh, man. Oh, yes. Terrified. <laughs> <laughs> We're so terrified excited. the amount of times you have to hear that song in that movie. Uh, we'll, we'll get there. But, mm. yeah. So, obviously, today we're talking Halloween 3, Season of the Witch, because, you know, we had to do a Halloween movie, and we figured, why do a good one? Um, that's... <laughs> that's the pull quote for our podcast. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. And I can't wait to talk about it after, of course, a very quick, as quick as we can. Where have you been doing? Um, what have I been doing? Where have I been doing? Did I ever talk about Joker? I feel like I didn't. I don't think you did. I feel like I just skipped uh, no, over the didn't. fact that I saw Joker. Uh, I saw Joker twice. I, I saw it once on one night, and it was a horrible experience because the guy next to me had me like afraid for my life the entire time. Definitely an overreaction on my part. He just wanted to take notes, but he had to search for those notes by aggressively digging in a backpack like every 10 minutes. It was creepy. Uh, so I saw it again the next day, and I really liked it. And I, I get why people don't like it. It's not a hill I'm willing to die on. But I would say it's pretty good. You should see it. Uh, cool. That's, I'll, I'll just stop right there. Chewie, what about you? Well, I finished my rewatch of Blade Trinity. <laughs> nice. Uh, <laughs> oh, that movie. <laughs> Woo, that movie. Uh, and that leads into, we also watched Dolomite on Netflix. Dolomite is my name. Dolomite is my name. Starring Eddie Murphy. Uh, the guy from Kimmy Schmidt. Never remember his name. Uh, Snoop Dogg's in it. Yep. And Wesley Snipes in it, yeah. which is really funny because at one point in Dolomite, Wesley Snipes goes up to Eddie Murphy and says, you know, that feeling you had when I don't remember what situation. And he goes, use it, use it, use it. And I'm like, oh, my God, he had this exact situation in Blade Trinity. <laughs> Where, it's performed much better in Dolomite. Oh, it's performed <laughs> so much better in Dolomite because <laughs> in Blade Trinity at one point. The blind girl dies, and Jessica feels sad. Aww. So Blade comes up behind her, just stands there, and whispers, Use it. Use it. Use it. Can we get another take on that, Wesley? So it- Fuck you. Use it. <laughs> and then Jessica Biel roars into the night, and it's just, oh, it's awful. So what you're saying is that's a perfect double feature, then. <laughs> no. No. Uh, but no, Dolomite is quite generally fantastic, and it's great to see Eddie Murphy really love working again i don't know i didn't see uh the supremes was supreme whatever. dream girls dream girls he was very um, good in i heard he was very good in it and i also didn't see that like tower or heist or whatever tower heist tower heist oh uh, i didn't see that brett ratner <laughs> they just didn't look they didn't grab me no uh dolomite did grab me though and it helps that you talked about it a whole bunch for the last two months what haunted mansion haunted mansion didn't grab you 
Nope, never saw that. <laughs> I do, however, <laughs> love Doctor Doolittle, and oh, I've rewatched boy. that movie a few times recently. <laughs> Why a few times? I thought it was just the once. No, it's like a really good movie to clean to. It's very uplifting, and it's got cute animals, and it's got Eddie Murphy at his prime. Fair enough. Yeah. I don't mind the Interesting. movie. Interesting. It's kind of weird you watched it that many times recently, but <sighs> hey. And yeah. Oliver Platt. How do you not love that movie? I mean, Oliver Platt's best work is clearly Lake Placid. We can move on. Uh, Oliver Platt's <laughs> best work is always whatever. No, no. Let's doing. just make that the podcast. Yeah, let's just talk about Oliver Platt movies. We will. <laughs> no. We will. No. Next year. Oliver no. Platt movies. Hey, we have not announced anything for next year yet. You keep that to yourself. Uh, that's make, coming later. I'm going to make you watch Ice Harvest. <laughs> Fine. John, where have you been doing? <laughs> so, still reading. Uh, finally got a Witcher book uh, after months. <laughs> Is it the and season of The Witcher? No, unfortunately. That would have been a great title for it. <laughs> that would have been so great. No, the book is called The Tower of Swallows, which, yeah, it's not any better, It's not I guess. a porno? <laughs> I no, think I've seen that it's on a... Midnight TV. <laughs> 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 That's a great yeah. porno name. <laughs> it really is. <laughs> it is. You know, it's a, it's a translated book title, so, you know, they, they get it right every once in a while um and yeah it's all about siri actually and her becoming a badass which is kind of cool but it's starting to pick up there's only two more books left in the series and yeah all the boring like these kings are doing this and these these battles are happening over here and all the boring political stuff is starting to go off to the side as the main plot and the stuff that the games are pulling from is starting to come into play and it's pretty interesting Cool. Yeah. Brock, what about you? Uh, two things. I watched a movie called Time Trap on Netflix. Uh, guess it was kind of an indie film. It was really bad. Uh, <laughs> so that was disappointing. It doesn't sound good. <laughs> it, like, and this is kind of my well to compare things to, so I, I apologize for going back to it. But it reminded me so much of every sexual performance I've ever had. Like where there's just so much effort put into it by every you know everyone involved, but it just isn't good enough, and has felt bad because they were trying. Your your wife's not gonna listen to this, is she? Your girlfriend? I mean, she knows. It's not a secret. Oh. She, she's been involved. She's there. Oh. oh, I watched the trailer for this. I just looked up the poster. I actually, for time trap? Yeah, I bought. I saw the trailer. I was like, I was target marketed. Like, I actually was interested in watching it. Oh boy. It, it, you know, it's it was it's it's not something that's painful to watch. Like, I enjoyed it because they were trying, and I didn't think anyone was you know phoning it in. But it's just not good. I love this poster though. That guy is really yelling with that gun. <laughs> At the caveman. Oh, yeah. it it. <laughs> It starts out pretty grounded and kind of like, ooh, this might be kind of sci-fi just a little bit, and then it is straight up. I mean, they jumped the shark probably good about 50 minutes into the movie where you're just like, I don't know what the fuck's going on anymore. I want to see it. I'm kind of into it. <laughs> I think I'm going to give it a shot. <laughs> it's. It, I mean, we had fun watching it together. It's definitely a good sit with your significant other and make fun of it kind of movie. So, if, if you're going to do that, it's fun. But if you're just sitting down by yourself to relax, it's it's not something I would recommend. Would it be better than Blade Trinity? <laughs> See, I love... I have a weird love for that movie because at the time I was a huge wrestling fan. So I was like, oh, Triple H and Ryan Reynolds. I'm going to watch Triple this. Triple H is a terrible vampire. <laughs> He's a terrible <laughs> actor all around. <laughs> Hoy. What was, your, what was your other one? You had Time oh. Trap and what else? started playing a game called we were here which is you basically two people you're in the snow someone knocks you out and you're each in different parts of a castle and you can only communicate through radios and you have to solve puzzles together together to get through and it's terrifying and a fucking blast uh it's on Mm. xbox game pass if uh, anybody has it so it's free and it is it's terrifying and fun and it's just one of the better games i've played in a long time so it's a horror game, uh, kind of more like suspense because like, okay. so I haven't seen the person that might have knocked us out, but my buddy who I'm radioing with, working with to get fall, he's like, oh, I just saw this figure go by, and you know he's freaking out. I'm like, I didn't see shit. So it's it's fun like that. It's kind of fucks with your mind a little bit. 
Oh, that sounds interesting. Yeah, nice little indie game. All right. Uh, should we should we dive into it? Should... Let's let's jump right in. Yeah. Should Put we jump right in? Does Brock have to do a breakdown? Brock does have to do a breakdown. And I didn't tell Brock he had to do what? a breakdown Aww, because I'm mean. <laughs> you are mean. What's going on? What's going on? Now, Brock, could, could you could you quickly tell us everything that happens in Halloween season, Halloween three season of the witch? They're okay. doing this two reasons. One, you never been on before, so I have to make you do it. Okay. Two, I think you're the only one who had seen the movie before we did this. Yeah, so my mom took me to or had me watch all these scary movies growing up because she had no one else to go with her. So I unfortunately saw all this shit way too young. Um, probably explains a lot. So my basic rundown of the movie would be there's a drunk old doctor and then some people start dying. Then he meets a young lady who he should not touch, but then he touches her. Then there's a oh, witch and touch. everyone's heads melt. And then that's the end. <laughs> I mean, that's, that's pretty much everything that happens. <laughs> yeah. It's, there's um, not a, the details really kind of don't matter in this movie because Nothing really gets paid off except for the mask. I think the mask just kind of suck. Like, yeah. it, th- there's just a lot of weird things in this movie, and I- I'm gonna ping pong all around as we kind of talk about this one because I-, I don't really know. I don't really know what they were thinking. Is is really the <laughs> best way to describe this because on its own. It's not a terrible movie. It's not a great movie. It's not even a particularly good movie, but it's not bad. Like if I had just stumbled upon this one as like some random horror movie from the eighties, I'd have been like, it's an okay way to spend an afternoon. This is the type of movie that when I watch it, I kind of, cause I remember hearing once from someone in college that they worked on a soap opera and in the writer's room, they just had these cards that had these general, like, situations or things. And they just have it on the wall, and they needed to follow the formula of a soap opera. So they just choose them at random and then make a story out of it. I mean, it works. And I felt like they kind of did that with this movie. They just put up a bunch of cards, but then they decided to play uh, darts. Yeah. And they just threw in whatever the dart landed on. It's so, like... they're, so they're like, warlocks. Stonehenge, <laughs> drunk, right. doctor, potential underage sex, <laughs> hot girl, robots, nudity, no nudity contract. We'll do what we can. Mysterious, <laughs> uh, small town. Yeah. Oh man. So obviously, we're all really big fans of it here at ATH. Yeah. Uh, we all we all loved watching it. Um, <laughs> five I, out of five. What are you talking about? <laughs> It's a like it's just such a weird movie, and and I don't even mean that it's that weird of a movie. Like I've seen weirder, and I've seen worse horror movies. For me, I'm just really stuck on this. Why the fuck is it a Halloween? So, um, from what I understand, and I could be wrong, is they plan on killing Myers off completely after two, right? Right, and they wanted to do like an anthology type deal, like kind of keep yeah, stuff, no. and then. Of course, everyone was pissed because after two movies, they were like, where the fuck's Michael Myers? And they even had, like, kind of what pissed me off was the fact that they played Halloween within Halloween like, oh, on yeah. their TVs. So, like, you can't even, like, well, at least he exists in this universe, so that's okay. It was like, no, it's a fucking movie in this universe, too. And that's what kind of really made me hate it. Because I think if you take the oh, fact that it's, you know, a Halloween movie out of it, you said it has that just some that eighties weird, creepy charm to it that does make it enjoyable if you look at it in a vacuum. I mean, enjoyable might be a strong word, but more <laughs> enjoyable I'll take. But like, but yeah, seriously, because like the gore effects are pretty good. The acting isn't terrible. I mean, the main guy sucks, but everybody he's else the isn't. The biggest problem with the movie. He's a he, he's a disaster of a character. He's the. Uh, mo- <laughs> we'll, we'll get to him yeah. in a second. Like I just I want to get John's take on so the film before we. Him. Before we move on too much farther. But John, John, how did you feel knowing, you know, what you know? You knew this didn't have Michael Myers in it because, we're, you know, we're here in the future. But still, it's a little jarring. Am I wrong? Uh, no, you're not wrong. And in fact, when I watched it, I didn't quite connect that this one didn't have Michael Myers in it. Oh, so really? about Yeah, no, I didn't read anything up on the movie going in. I was like, you know, let me just go in fresh because I tend to have the most interesting reactions to that. And about 30 minutes in, I was seeing like, there was a shot of like Michael Myers chasing Jamie Lee Curtis on in the TV, and I was like, 
he's not in this movie, is he? <laughs> <laughs> and then it just went like weirder and weirder from there to where I was confused, but kind of like, oh, this is fun? Question mark, question mark, times 10. Yeah, no, it was very weird. Yeah, it's just a... And especially like when you look at like the making of it, like they were so sure they had like a golden ticket here. Like, nope, it's going to be great. People are going to love it. They didn't even really wrap filming Halloween 2. The entire crew just carried over directly into Halloween 3. Almost the enti- everyone from the original, from Halloween 2, is worked on this one as well because they had no time. You know, I just came up with a thing in my brain that this is like a total recall. Where this doctor has had a drunk stupor, he's passed out, and in his brain, he came up with a scenario where he gets to be a hero, get the hot, sexy young lady, who's and thirsty, who's thirsty as fuck, <laughs> and his kids die at the end, so he doesn't have any more obligations. But in real life, he's just like in a gutter somewhere. Yeah, he's like, just in a gutter love drunk love somewhere. So it's a, like a Jacob's seriously. Ladder scenario. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Yeah, he, you know, because he'll pretend to be really upset that he no longer has children to take care of, but he clearly doesn't give a fuck about that. Oh no, he can't be bothered to go trick or treating with his kids. No, he's gonna go off and I don't know, be a detective for some reason. He's a doctor. What are you doing? <laughs> you know what? Let's just start with. Well, that's part of his job description. That's part of the job description, though. I I really just want to at that hospital. Brock, you took a lot of notes on him. What are your feelings on the the main doctor? So. Uh, he has a 24-year age difference between him and the young woman that he ends up sleeping with. <laughs> Lovely. Oh so he, I think at the time that literally made him twice her age, which was... And she looked younger than her age. I think she was 21 at the time of filming. And she she looked like she would, could have been 16, 17 years old. So that was completely uncomfortable. And he asks her how old she is after they've already had sex twice. Yeah. And then, uh, God, just the, that... That scene. Especially because I read... I read the I read an interview with her about it, and she's just like, "Yeah, I had a no nudity contract, and they are determined to have sex scenes. And the only reason that we do a topless scene is that they covered my boob with his mouth." It's like, what the fuck, dudes? So this was like Platinum Dunes before Platinum Dunes. Yeah, like, oh, why? This was like why? Proto Dunes. Why? <laughs> why? Because that's, that's horrible boobies. to hear. But but women are people. Why is that so hard this... to understand? Nineteen eighties. Because it was the 80s. He, I also counted that he sexually harassed two of his uh, nurses in the beginning of the movie as well. Like, by grabbing their ass oh, yeah, or trying right. to have sex with oh, them. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And then not to mention the uh, the coroner, who he just blatantly hits on the whole time. And she was she was part of reshoots. She wasn't even in the original movie. I'm like, yeah, we didn't have wow. a girl for him to harass. <laughs> My God. Oh, I'm sorry, Brock. You were saying. Yeah, no, that that's... Most of my notes are just how incredibly creepy he is throughout the whole movie. And then also that he, as we just mentioned, that he decides that he does, to blow off his kids to go solve a mystery with a barely legal teenager. He straight up calls and says, I'm giving up my weekend. (laughs) But he'll be back for trick or treating, which he's not. Which he's not. And his kids die. Yep, his kids die. His kids definitely died. Oh, totally. And that means his ex-wife also definitely died. Bro, see, he's off the hook for everything. Oh, yeah. It's a total recall. Yeah, he he really yeah. walks away <laughs> like, do you think everybody believed how upset I was? Because if they did, I am going to skip the fuck out of here. Tra-la-la-la-la. I mean, to be, fair, <laughs> to be fair, he sells that last shout before credits. I mean, he just goes for it. Is that so, the one where he I mean, looks in the camera? Yeah. He's like, ah, yeah. turn it off. Yeah. Perfect. And, Honestly, as much as he sells that scene, that scene is probably the only reason I like the movie. The fact that they lose really kind of makes me go, oh, that's pretty cool. Oh, yeah. No, if you want to win points with me, like, make him lose. <laughs> yeah. And he, but does he lose? Oh, no. He wins. The world loses. Yeah. Because, <laughs> and so like, do we by proxy. I pointed but, this yeah. out earlier. Because if he really cared, he would have smashed that TV so that kid, just, that kid that was in front of him would have melted. Yeah, exactly. It's like, well... Okay, so he's not going to... You can't, I don't know who the fuck he called just to begin with. Who yeah, the hell do you yeah, call to turn off know. commercials countrywide? Multiple channels. First off, that's an impressive phone call. The fact that he got two channels down, you at least saved some kids. So, you know, congratulations there. But B, yeah. if you really cared, save the kid who's 10 feet away from you. Yeah. 
Fuck face. Yeah. What time zone <laughs> was the nine o'clock for too? Like, what time zones got murdered in that? I don't know. Yeah, because oh, they're on the west That's coast. More... So, like, when... Northern California. Like, yeah. I so when this already been like, hey, New York, all the kids' faces melted. Maybe we shouldn't watch that commercial. Right. And not to mention, how stupid of a plan is it? Is the big giveaway? What's the giveaway? Is this a big salad from the Seinfeld? The giveaway is your soul. <laughs> it's murder. <laughs> this movie frustrates me. <laughs> the giveaway is your life. Um, I guess. It's definitely not like candy or anything. Like, at least lie to him. Like, we're giving away a lifetime supply of candy. A free mask. Yeah. You already got the mask. Yeah. Maybe a fourth mask. Because, I don't know. White kids get super excited only having three options. Yeah, which was also weird. The, so many weird choices. Yeah, like the worst yeah. mask in the world, too. There's nothing to them. No. Like, hooray, I have a pumpkin mask. I could have gotten this at Kmart for, like, nothing. And it wouldn't have a big fucking hunk of metal on the back of yeah. it. Yeah. Like, if I was a kid and someone gave me that mask, I would immediately rip off that coin. <laughs> oh, this mask smells like gasoline. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Ah, oh, this mask smells like Stonehenge. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Oi. But, uh, okay, so moving past that, uh, I want to talk a little bit about the girl. Uh, I actually, I don't think she was bad in the movie. I, I thought, I mean, her character is fucking ridiculous. The whole fact that her dad dies and her reaction is, I want to bang a 40-year-old, is really weird. Um but there's a lot her, to unpack there, yeah. And yeah. her definition of I've been doing some investigating and my definition of doing some investigating is quite different. She read <laughs> one book. <laughs> and it was just her dad's ledger. Like that's yeah. not really investigating. You didn't really make phone calls. Yeah, I, mean, I think she said I think she much. said she made one call. But yeah. she's like, I'm quite she... the detective and it's like, No, you're not, but keep no. going. <laughs> <laughs> you read the thing put in front of your face. And it's just like the whole time they go to the town to find out what her dad did there. I'm like, he was picking up masks. He wrote that in his ledger. <laughs> Mystery solved. <laughs> what was my dad doing in this town? Well, it says here, go get masks. I bet he was going to get masks. Yeah. <laughs> but why? I'm a detective. It says here he owned a store and you knew about it your whole fucking life. God. Uh, Ugh. Well, do you want to fuck here then and not take a road trip? Yeah, sounds good. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Movie saved. <laughs> he literally tells her, like, let's slow down and not investigate so he can bang her. Oh, yeah. Oh. And then, oh, my God. And then he, like, pulls out the good guy card. He's like, let's slow down. Let's slow down. Should I get a different room? Uh, I just, yeah, the time, because he's like, oh, it's getting late. We should just hunker down. And then it, we cut away from them having sex, and then they're like, curfew, 6 p.m. I'm like, wait, what? What time were they in the hotel room? Yeah, well, did they roll his in bed at, like, time is going to be 6, yeah. <laughs> right. And then later He looks on, at the clock, it's like 4 o'clock. He's like, oh, it's getting late, we should bang. <laughs> it's so late, take your clothes off. <laughs> <laughs> and then there's, like, no explanation for the curfew. No, none whatsoever. Why did they have a curfew? Because we only had the one guy who wasn't, like, into the town. And it's, like, that one dude who's just, like, the homeless guy. is like, fuck you, Cochran. And then he gets his head just popped off by Michael Myers. Yeah. Hooray. Oh, that was the actor. That was the actor Michael. played Michael Myers. He showed up. Mm-hmm. Um, Jamie Lee Curtis is also in the movie. She plays the, uh, whenever they say uh, your phone cannot be connected, that's Jamie Lee Curtis. Aww. They all oh, showed up. Nice. Aww. The gang's all here <laughs> in this horrible movie that I also kind of like <laughs> for some reason. Yeah, every time you we, tell we me should... that it has a big following right now, I'm like, is it like the Rift Tracks type following? Honestly, I haven't really looked too much into it, but from what I understand, it's mostly just we judge this movie really harshly for not having Michael Myers in it, when in all reality, it's just a meh, horror movie. Yeah. Although, BloodyDisgusting.com has boldly declared it is the best of the Halloween franchise. So, collectively join me Whoa. in never going to bloodydisgusting.com again. That just makes again. me assume <laughs> that they don't like the franchise. Either they don't like the franchise, or they're like, I don't want to get people to come to our website. This one's the best. Come check out our site. Yeah. But see, I, I think, I think despite not really un- knowing that Michael Myers was in it, or not connecting that right away, I was still expecting it to be just this awful, completely horrible experience. Like, it's the worst one. There, there's kind of this absorption of the pop culture like oh we hate this one this is the bad one and like you were saying i was like, I, I didn't think it was bad and I, I think that's where the 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 shit like the inconsistency is it's like eh, this yeah. isn't actually that bad this is there's parts that are actually kind of endearing in their cheesiness and 
like the rope the, the mysterious men in suits being robots and they're menacing like there's like cool elements surrounding all this like mush that this movie is <laughs> isn't there one with buster rhymes in it or something i'm pretty sure that's the worst one. Oh yeah resurrection <laughs> yeah yeah halloween resurrection is far and away the worst fucking one I'd much rather watch this one than Resurrection any I, day of the week. I could maybe yep. enjoy this movie if it didn't have the main character. I totally like that's that's what I mean. I hate him so much. He he's a disaster of a just a disaster of a character. He's the definition of but I'm a good guy. But I'm a good guy. What are you good about? Like you just seem like a crap human being. Well, well I'm a doctor. <laughs> you left your hospital to investigate something. You look like you drink on the job. It, were, yeah. <laughs> were they trying to make it a redemption angle? I don't know. I maybe. <laughs> I feel they like they failed. They I, definitely failed. Yeah, I just was trying to figure out why I write him that way because it it doesn't change. He's still a shit the whole time. The only thing I could come <laughs> up with is it's the '80s and the good old boy thing was still okay. Yeah. Yeah, it was just a, a lot of very odd decisions. Um, but moving to something I kind of liked about the movie, I, when it comes to, like the characters in it, I really like the bad guy. The main oh, warlock yeah. dude. I, yeah, I like his whole little speech. Yeah. Here's my evil plan. Now I'm going to leave you alone in a room, chained yeah. to a chair, and what could go wrong? He's very, like, James Bond villain-esque. <laughs> like, like, even he's got a big control room. Everything's, like, stainless steel. Yeah. And I love, like, the whole, like, the... It's a, the greatest trick of all. A trick on the kids. You're murdering so many fucking children. He's like, it's just a trick. <laughs> like, I just like, yeah. he's just such an over-the-top villain. He's just kind of fun. Yeah, we're like, and we got really a sells stone it. from Stonehenge here. Oh. It was a trip getting it here. <laughs> I want to watch that movie. Yeah, no kidding. But you're right. Yeah, he just, he way over, like, he just chews the scenery like no one else. It's fan- I, I really enjoyed it. He really brought the movie up from just yeah. unwatchable to like, oh, it's entertaining. Whenever he's on screen, I'm in. I kind of liked yeah, the it, not Randy Quaid character. Oh, the guy who's oh dies? the the yeah. salesman. Yeah, yeah, they he, kill a fucking. They just kid. reeked of like the vacation <laughs> movies to me. Oh, totally. Their kids sucked though. Well, yeah, he, fa- he he sucked like Willy Wonka kid style. Yeah, just riding away, flipping his mom off. Like, yeah, I hope that kid dies. Oh, he does. <laughs> I mean, that's one nice thing the movie did for us. He he, he it was kind of a brutal death. Not as brutal as the poor neighbor who's just digging at the button and got her face melted off. Yeah. Oh, that was rough. Oof. That, that that's the thing. Mouth like, I mentioned earlier. Yeah. yeah. I, I mentioned earlier the gore of the movie is pretty decent. Yeah. I think the only one that looked really bad was when the when they popped the head off. That was the one that was like, eh. By the way, it kind of looked like he was going <laughs> to give them a blowjob. Oh, totally. Totally. I know but, he's being murdered in this scenario, but yeah, that's just where my head went. I. I I went to the same place, but granted, we're married, so maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Great minds think alike. Yeah. How about you guys? Did you guys think he was about? No, I know you know. I know. I mean, I would have done whatever to get out of that scenario, so I'm not. I'm not here to judge. Yeah. I mean, that would have been really upsetting. Like, I'll blow you. I'm a robot. No dick. Ah. No, but you what a nice suit you have. I'm a robot. Oh. Uh, Chewy did bring up a very good point with all the uh, the evil robot dudes. Does anybody else get an investor's vibe from them? Speaking out to my oh, ventures. Oh yeah. Was this? A- <laughs> it was at the beginning of the movie. It totally felt like he was trying to run away from the investors. Oh, totally. I really wanted them yeah, to totally yeah, see that. Yeah. It, if just what, just, just in another reality, if he had fallen down, is like, and he just looks up, he's like, "You'll never get away, silly Billy." <laughs> <laughs> I'd have been so happy. Uh, you never give an uh, Emma a free Willy. What? <laughs> <laughs> oh, now I just want to watch Free Willy. That was a bad I ha- movie. I don't have not seen that movie in a really long time. And I remember loving it. It was a good movie when we were kids. My grandpa yeah. took me to that one. That's how old that one yeah, was. Yeah, I never mm. did see Flipper, but I saw Free Willy. Hmm. What other aquatic movies? Did you see Andre? Oh, stop. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, moving past all of that jargon. And just a little bit more just like the movie itself. Not just characters and whatnot. Um, there's something that I, I noticed again in this one, and he gets a lot of credit for, like, film fans. But if you're not, like, a like a film aficionado, and I'm not trying to talk down to anybody, I understand. People have other hobbies than just movies like us. Uh, John Carpenter does not get nearly enough credit as a composer. No. Oh, like, my God. Yeah. You're right. No. Because even the music in this, like, he wrote it all again. And the music is totally different than the original Halloween. Still totally distinct and just great. Every time the score f- swelled up, it's like, fuck, he can write music. Yeah. 
And and what's interesting is like it still has traces of the stuff from original Halloween, and you can oh, sense sure. it. But he he takes it in such a wild, different direction. And even his stingers, when the the men in suits come in, they were delightful. I was yeah. kind of laughing along with the movie during those, where it's like we're panning off to the side here. Oh, there's a man in a suit. I'm like yeah. that's great, actually. <laughs> Yeah, he he's just got a really great way of like really just matching his music to the screen that like a lot of composers are like you know they're known for and you don't really question it but they you're like, oh, they're composers that's their job and John Carpenter never is looped in with them but he's just as good like I honestly think he's just as good as most modern composers we have like his music is always just pitch perfect to the screen which makes the whole like anthology thing that they wanted to go for like I buy into that because it's like oh he could have he could make a great composition for each different movie and it would feel it of a universe. Yeah. What other than American horror story, what franchise made an anthology work? I feel like American horror story really broke the mold out on that. Wasn't are there a master of horror series that like HBO did in like 10 or 15 years back. That was kind of that type of deal. I read cable. So I don't know. I mean, you could kind of it's different but you could kind of like tales from the crypt was kind of like that uh yeah twilight zone is kind of like that yeah but those are all they're, they're similar they're kind of the same they idea all had like a narrator type uh, sure yeah. a spokesperson type thing like something that was just like we're gonna ha- it's going to be in the same line but it's all gonna be their own movies no i, I think that's the only one that really has pulled it off American Horror Story. Well, other shows have done it since then. I mean, we have American Crime and other things, right? Yeah, but... Well, and different genres have attempted it to great effect. But, like, I would say, yeah, no. Like what? American Horror Story has been the, the main one. Well, I'm just, like, trying to think of, like, what made them think this was going to work in the 80s? Like, they really thought they were just doing their own thing? Or was there an example of a successful I, franchise I think... for movies? I think they thought they had so much goodwill coming from Halloween and Halloween 2 that people were going to see whatever they want. And John Carpenter, for all of his, like, he's got great movies and he's got fucking horrible movies, but he knows how to tell a story. So I think he just kind of assumed that, like, people would take the logical conclusion that we saw Michael Myers die. And you really fucking see him die at the end of 2. Like, he's dead. Hmm. So I think people kind of like, well, of course he's not going to be in the next one because he died. So why would we make another one with him? This isn't, like... <laughs> This isn't insane. Like, this isn't like that Friday the 13th thing. Again, Jason hasn't really died yet. Um, he had, and he, that, he dies, at, like, I think, two years after this one in, fa- in oh, part four. Oh, when he becomes undead. Yes. Yeah. You know. Can, can I ask a real quick question about Friday the 13th? Oh, yeah. We can talk about Friday the 13th the rest of the episode. Sure. Uh, so, if he died as a kid, how come he's a grown man later? Like, did he grow? He didn't one? die as a kid. Okay, yeah, they he didn't. Just say okay. that he didn't die. Yeah, well, he what, just didn't die as a kid. Where was he? I don't then? know why his where mom did, where kept did him he go? in seclusion. His his mom kept him in seclusion. Really? Because he had brain damage from almost drowning. Oh. Oh, All that's right. why? Because he's supposed to have brain damage. I'm making this up, but it makes sense for me. Oh, I, I was I was believing. <laughs> I mean, it. I bought it. Yeah. Yeah, it sounds I logical, that doesn't it? <laughs> Are they paying yeah. you? Because yeah, they should. Oh, if they would, I already have. I have two Friday the Thirteenth movies that I really want to write, and I would. They'd be great. They'd be so good. Uh, but it's fine. It's fine. You know, Paramount wants to give, I think it was like LeBron James the rights or something weird like that. What? Some basketball player. I don't remember which one. I thought it was LeBron. Um, it's a terrible idea. Terrible. Oh, here's a question for the room. Uh, what the fuck did the doctor do at the end that won? Like, how, why was throwing all the coins into the room? What What happened? What did I miss? He... He threw he a box typed of in a thing on the balcony. code, right? Yeah. And the and commercial the started, and then yeah. the, even though the coins weren't attached to anybody, they still gave out. They were a activated signal. or something. And they, so no one knows. It makes I mean, no sense. Is that what I'm getting from the room here? Well, yeah. someone this, referenced this, the misfire. Same thing is, and when just, did she turn into a robot? Like, ah, eh, she just yeah. did. It does explain to why she's like lo- laying what looks to be comatose on the table and then suddenly running down the hall with him. Yeah, I'd assume she was dead. Yeah. I'm just kind of like, oh, she's dead. Oh, no, she's running. I guess she's okay. Oh, yeah. no, she's probably a she robot. She woke up really fast. Yeah, she's probably a robot. Oh, no, Did she? Robot. I got better. Was she a robot of. the whole time, Ellie? No. Okay. No. Because that, we, I thought that for a while, too. I'm like, wait, no, she's a robot the whole time. Then 
why are they mm. really going after this one doctor to come yeah, investigate no, them? And it's, yeah, it's if she why? were a robot the whole time, he would have he would have noticed something was amiss during their sexy times. No way. Mm. No, I would. You don't notice. know how good he is at creating vaginas. It, if I had to guess, is the doctor a generous lover? No. 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 Probably kind of like in Dolomite, where he goes, "Put your weight on it." Mm, put your weight on it. Uh, <laughs> I haven't seen that movie. I don't know what you're talking about. Uh, and you're like, is that a sexy thing to say during sex? No. That's why it's funny in that movie that I haven't seen. I don't know what you're talking about. Um, <laughs> I'm never going to explain why I do this. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so if that's kind of everything that we can say about Season of the Witch, now for a segment that we've never done before, and who knows what we could do again, I already know Chewie's answered this question. This movie, we all kind of agreed, had an idea that could have been great. Instead, we got this. If you could change any one thing about this movie to make it the movie you wished it was, what would it be? And I'll let Chewie go first, because I'm pretty sure I know her answer. Just get rid of the doctor. Yeah, there it is. <laughs> Just have it be the daughter. What did we need him for? Well, you need a, uh, a not Richard Bronson type to go, mm, young girls. Ugh. <laughs> oh. Dude, come on, 80s. Oh. I know you sucked for a lot of reasons. We were all born in the 80s. At least I think we all were. Brock just said his mom took him to this movie because I no, don't no, know how no, old we, Brock is. We, we rented it from the VHS store back in the day. Okay. I'm also old. But I'm curious. <laughs> the good old VHS store. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, so the good things about the 80s is we were all born in them. But the, it, yeah. for entertainment, you know, they gave us a lot of movies about rape and telling us it was funny. Uh, and nowadays we're like, no, that's not funny. Uh, so this movie would really benefit from just getting rid of the freaking doctor and having it about the girl. I would go one step further, I think. Eh, no, it's probably kind of the same page. I agree with you. Get rid of the doctor. He sucks. I, uh, however, I, I would also say I would want another person with the girl because her plot line really makes no sense because, hey, you know. Where's my dad? It says here he went to go buy masks. But why did he go? Like, that whole thing. Like, she's just kind of an idiot. Then maybe have her be with the guy from the gas station. Yeah, that's kind of what I was thinking. Like, like just rope somebody else into it yeah. who's not trying to be like Because he's the... all like, my mama always said you should help people. Yeah. Unless there's something attached. Well, something. and that's why he no. he no longer helps. But, but like, that's kind of yeah. what I want. Like, And I really would have liked it to be one of the kids. Like, that's kind of what I... I think that would have been fun. Like, especially because it's all about, like... Like, the tagline of the movie was, like, the Halloween where no one comes home. But then we spend no time with any of the kids. I and mean, we see his, like, we see the doctor's kids for, like, two seconds. They slap on the mask. And they're like, that is Halloween, Halloween, Halloween. And that's about <laughs> it. Um, so it would have been kind of cool. To, like, maybe she's, like, the oldest daughter and he's got, like, one younger kid. Uh, and, like, now she needs, like, what happened to our dad? And, like, maybe, like, some sort of relations like that. Get the romance just fucking out of here because it's not needed. And mm-hmm. I, I think just stripping it down to just, like, more of a family affair would have made it that much better of a film in my yeah. mind. Uh, yeah, that, that's what I would do. Get rid of the doctor. Get rid of any romantic interest whatsoever. Make it about, like, a daughter and, like, a younger brother or maybe you know, something like that. I think that would have made me a lot happier. Just to show, like, more of the effect of I want that mask because all we have right now is two kids in one scene throwing the masks on already having them and just being very happy that they have them and then sitting three inches away from the TVs because, you know, their parents suck. Yeah. That's it for me. <laughs> John, what about you? What would you change? Uh, I kind of would have shifted the details a little bit. Yeah, I got, agreed. Get rid of the doctor because he sucks. But the um, person who did the autopsy, like, I think I, I think it would be kind of a cool idea to make it to where a series of mysterious deaths and sui- like death suicides with no evidence of the killer like they found before it's like it's all just machine parts so then eventually it leads the autopsy the doctor doing the autopsy to this place like shift it a little bit more and make it a little bit more of that mystery about these mysterious deaths and kind of structured it more along the lines of a mystery like that can we just say she's not a coroner <laughs> she's a forensics person that was another thing that annoyed me in this movie, honestly. Not a, that's nothing against you, John. No, she didn't no, do no. any autopsy. There was no body. So here's the next question. Right. Was she just, like, forensic, and I just assumed coroner, and then I've just been throwing this all way off? 
I thought they said corner at some point. So did I, but, but I could be. I also thought yeah. cards on the table. I thought he was married the whole time, and I was really annoyed with oh, him. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I did too, and I was getting real mad with how much he was cheating on his wife. I totally missed the part where they said ex wife. I'm like, this guy sucks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it took me a moment to realize, like, oh, wait, they're not married. Okay. Oops. Yeah, yeah like, so it could be that they maybe gave dude. it a throwaway line or something, and we just yeah. didn't catch on, or they just really really squished all those details together. I, I think it's probably the latter. Uh, Brock, what about you? What, what would you, how would you fix this Magnus Opus piece of shit? If we can go of... on the way, way back machine, I would say, honestly, you could just change the title and I think it would have survived for the time. You know, if you don't have the expectation of it being a Halloween movie, you can still slap Carpenter's name on it since he was involved. Sell it on that if you have to. But I think if you change expectations, this movie gets a different perception. So what would we rename it? Uh, hmm. London Bridge is Falling Down. Stonehenge. <laughs> Season of the Witch. Not just a sex thing. <laughs> What's the deal? What's the deal? What's the deal? <laughs> just call it Henge. <laughs> Not sure what the fuck a Henge is. Uh, I'm just going to keep referencing other comedians. Yell uh, this. <laughs> <laughs> um... Yeah, what what would the name of this movie be? I mean, the mask. Mm. <laughs> well, I I I don't remember who said I'm it, but I think you could just call it "Season of the Witch" and you know slap Carpenter's name on it. I think you're good to go. It'd be nice to have a witch in it, though. Yeah, but season maybe of "Season the... of the Warlock." If what, what, the, what the title could be <laughs> "Season of the Witch" actually is a warlock, and somehow have the accent on it. <laughs> It's Frankenstein's actually, monster, you have like guys. an animation of a guy pushing up his glasses. Actually, it's a warlock. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that'd be perfect. Um, they find like one right. piece of evidence. It's like, it's witches! And then a guy pops in. Just no context. Yeah, it's actually warlock. Uh. <laughs> Just like, like do the toasty from uh, fucking Mortal Kombat. But warlock! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> kind of like when... I'll, I'll fully admit, sometimes I get like that when I have to... Describe to somebody the difference between androids, robots, and cyborgs. How often does that come up? Not too often, but I definitely, it definitely happens. Like twice a day. <laughs> well, actually, if it's meant to look like a human, it's an android. <laughs> <laughs> and if they have any uh, organic parts, it's a cyborg. As funny as it is, if you've ever had that done to you, it is the most belittling thing <laughs> in the entire world. I've done it to people. I do that to my coworkers when they try to talk about comic books. All right. I think it's time. For quote, unquote, quote, 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 quotes, quotes, favorite <laughs> quotes of the movie. I'm going to go first because mine was so good. And it was just, we, we've mentioned many a time how thirsty this girl was because my God. And it's in that scene where they're in the hotel and he's like, so should I get another room? And she's like, well, that looked weird, wasn't it? And I'm like, oh God, it's a porno. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, oh, I guess that's true. So I guess I could, you know, I'll, I'll sleep in the car. It'd be better to sleep on the floor. And he looks at her and she goes, where do you want to sleep? Bubble, bubble, boom. Oof. It's just so goddamn forward. It's, ah, I loved it. It was great. See, having a John Carpenter stinger right then would have been perfect. <laughs> just like that. <laughs> 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 Oof. Chewie, what was your quote? Yours was fantastic. Oh, uh, Linda. Linda, listen. <laughs> <laughs> now Linda Linda listen <laughs> listen Linda <laughs> that was my favorite part of the movie <laughs> I'm like oh my god this movie's referencing a the meme future. before it happens this kid's not gonna be born for like 30 years <laughs> Linda Linda listen <laughs> I should have said that one for last I knew that was the best quote we had uh, John, what about you? Uh, somewhere along the line, one of them asks, I think it's Ellie, uh, Irish Halloween masks? And the doctor is like, in California, you never know. <laughs> it's like, okay, sure. Yeah, why are you throwing shade at the Irish about Halloween? We're allowed to celebrate Halloween. Fuck face. I, it's just, it's, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm only part Irish, but I still took offense to that line. Yeah, it's just like, what? What is this movie? <laughs> <laughs> weird irish racism like i thought we'd gotten that out of our systems a while ago nah. turns out nope racism never goes away it's the 80s dude <laughs> uh 
All right, Brock, if you had a favorite quote from this movie, now is the time. They, uh, I do love a good joke, and this is the best joke ever. A joke on the children. Just, I felt that was awkward and weird, and I loved it. It's such a weird, like, a joke on the children. It's not a joke. It's a fucking genocide. Yeah, it's murder. <laughs> I murdered them. The joke's on them. Oh, God. Ha, <laughs> ha, it's joke. <laughs> <laughs> no one's laughing. Turns out warlocks have a real shitty sense of humor. Whew. <laughs> Hmm. Well, actually, warlocks aren't really funny. They don't really do the humor thing. Ah, <laughs> uh, fuck. I knew it happened to me at some point in this episode. Uh, all right. Review system for this week. I'm wondering if you guys have felt it coming. Just like from the rafters. This is clearly going to be the review system for this week. This movie's about Halloween. Trick-or-treaters. What kind of candy would you give this movie? Hmm. Hmm. And I've got the answer. It's clearly the only answer. Is it all- I'm giving it a decent-sized bag of candy corn. And that's because most people generally agree candy corn sucks. If you eat too much of it, you feel kind of awful. But there are a few people out there that swear by the shit. And they'd be very happy with that big bag of candy corn. Those people are few and far between. But for them, this is perfect. But for the rest of us, it's like, Why? So, I would also do candy corn, but one of those random flavors of oh candy God. corn. Where you think you're just getting candy corn, you're like, alright, I'm prepared to possibly not like this. Because every now and then you do like candy corn, if you're in the right mood and you're not sure about it until you eat it. Yeah. But no, yeah. this time you bit into like a, on here it says gingerbread <gasps> candy corn. How Ew. dare they? They do that flavor. <laughs> Uh, so this movie's a gingerbread candy corn, where you put it in your mouth, and you're just like, what the fuck is this trash? (laughs) And then you throw up a little bit, and you throw it at the person who gave it to you. This just gets better and better. (laughs) I would love to see that interchange. Like some candy corn? Yes, I would. The fuck is this? (laughs) (laughs) It's the last time Chewy gets invited anywhere. (laughs) go to a place that gives me a different <laughs> flavor of candy corn i'm already on the fence about them giving me candy corn <laughs> Oi, john what about you so i'm gonna give it a one of those larger size tootsie rolls because as you're eating it you're like this has like this is good question mark but then there's a lot of effort involved in eating through a tootsie roll oh god it makes your jaw hurt after yeah. a while yeah yeah, They're yeah. always like rock hard. You have to like warm them up in your mouth. You're questioning Ew. a lot of your choices as you're eating it, and it's just and then it gets similar stuck to in the your movie. Teeth. Yeah, and you're just oh, like, yep. why did I think this was a good idea? Right, right. You're, you go through a, a huge journey <laughs> as you eat the thing, <laughs> and then at the There's end, you're not emotions. sure you really enjoyed it. <laughs> and everyone listening knows exactly what we're talking yeah. about. <laughs> You always look at it, you always go, that's a bad idea, and you always eat it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Brock, last but not least. All right, uh, so I'm going to go with Almond Joy, because whenever I charge my kids the candy tax, as I call it, and I'm eating candy without paying attention, it looks like chocolate. You bite into it, and you're like, oh, sh- shit, this is coconut. This is awful. But there's still a little <laughs> bit of chocolate in there, so me being a fat guy, I still eat it. So, like, there's a little bit of what I wanted in there, but not really, but I finish it anyway. And it's really hard almonds, by the way, so you kind of worry about your teeth while you're eating it. Oh, yeah. That's true. Thanks. Yeah, fuck no. almond joys. It'd be better without it's the doctor. So terrible candy. But I actually think this is one of our more successful review systems we've had in a while, so I feel pretty good about it. Although now I really just don't want Halloween candy. <laughs> Luckily, our son is not old enough to go trick-or-treating, so we have like another year till our house is just like, what the fuck are we going to do with all this stuff? Ugh. We it- gave him a donut from <laughs> Dunkin' Donuts when we went for our walk, and then the rest of the walk home was him going, more, more, more. 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 <laughs> <laughs> no more. We don't have any more. No more. And he's just staring at the bag. He's like, fuck you. I know they're in there. <laughs> <laughs> Oi. Oh. So happy Halloween! We did it. Halloween three Yay. season of the Yay. witch has been witched. Uh, Actually, it's been warlocked. Sorry, sorry. Let we me survived push it. Up my we survived real it. Quick. 
Actually. <laughs> that sounded like those were heavy glasses. My God, are you it's okay, man? Wore, I am always jealous of that with people that wear glasses. Yeah. You should be. Yeah. Because, you know, 90% of the time, it's more so just like, God damn, these fucking things won't stay up. We're not just trying to be cool. Yeah, yeah they will <laughs> um, fall off. Well, I am smarter than you, clearly. <laughs> I have glasses. <laughs> Oi. So, uh, let's move into plugs. 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 Uh, starting first and foremost, I'm going to plug the show that you're currently listening to after the hype and just let you know what's coming up. Uh, so we have three more episodes left until Big 300, and all three of those episodes will be the original trilogy of Star Wars, and I'm so excited to actually go back and review the legitimate Star Wars movies. Not that the other ones haven't been legitimate, but we've always been kind of like dancing around them. We've done them in battles. We've done them when we explained them all to Amber Lee. Like, we've done fun things, but we've never actually covered them. So I figured, what better time than now? Um, and then we're going to take a break. We're going to celebrate having 300 episodes after the hype. Fuck yes, didn't think we could do it. And we're going to do that by watching 300, because why the fuck not? <laughs> it seems like the right choice. Uh, and then after that, we're going to the prequel trilogy. And we're going to cover those three. And the last movie will come out the day before the new Star Wars film. And then we're going to take a little bit of a break. And I'm not exactly sure when we get back. It's probably going to take about three weeks-ish uh, while we kind of retool our show a little bit. And I'm very excited for everything that's going to be coming out in 2020. It will not be the after the hype that you knew, but it will be the after the hype that you now love. That you deserve. That you deserve. Uh, <laughs> and I'm, the very little pitch that I'll give you right now, very, very, very quickly, is that we're going to kind of get done with the current-ish movies. And we're going to start doing our own thing. Because we've been dancing with that the whole fucking time. And why not just do what we want? So it's really just going to be all Polly Shore all the time, right? There might be a little bit of Polly Shore. Yeah. Let's watch all the Polly Shore movies. We might. Now you spoiled it, Chewie. It's, it's the Polly Shore podcast now. Uh, <laughs> I'm so excited. Polly Shore cast, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> if you do in the army now, I'm Pauly being Shore on that cast. episode. <laughs> we're, we're not doing a Polly Shore podcast. We might do an That's episode just... or four on it. I'm not going to get into specifics, but it will not just be the Polly Shore. Cast, I'm totally going to squeeze the juice. <laughs> We're going to do a Goofy movie, for sure, if we do this. Because he's in it for a little bit. Um, other than that, be sure every Monday to check out Venture Bros. Uh, we're almost done, and it's very sad. We're in season seven. Uh, Brock, we keep shouting his praise every week, and he's never on with us because timing doesn't work. But Brock, you've been doing a great job keeping us uh, factual and up-to-date and making sure our breakdowns make sense as we just read what you wrote, because otherwise we wouldn't be able to do it. Um, Appreciate and, uh, it. That's it for my plugs. Uh, Chewy, you plugging? Watch Superstore <laughs> on NBC Thursday night. Love that show. Yeah, it's such a good show. Yeah. John, yeah, listen to my show, Demon Days, an actual play podcast with a focus on fiends. We're rocking it out over there and having the time of our lives playing D and D. Uh, Brock, what about you? Uh, I have new damage boost coming out. This Friday with uh, probably my favorite interview. Or not, I don't say favorite because that makes it sound like I don't like giving my other guests. It's one of my better interviews I've done. Um, I actually showed up and asked good questions this time, so I'm real proud of that. And uh, it's a really good one. It's Halloween themed, kind of, even though it'll be right after Halloween. And also, we are raising money for Extra Life. So if you go to my Twitch uh, Damage Boost podcast on Twitch and just scroll down. There's a link and donate money. We're only two hundred dollars, I think, away from our goal of eight hundred. So I'd oh, like nice. to get there hopefully before November sixteenth. I think is our last day when we do our big twenty four hour stream extravaganza with Super GG Radio. Awesome. Oh, nice. Oh, good uh, also, uh, also Brock, uh, can people subscribe to your cha- like do the pay subscribe yes thing. you can use the amazon prime if you don't want to pay but it still counts and helps me out so if you got amazon prime you can subscribe for free cool awesome uh i believe that's everything right we've done it that's it yeah uh right. we've all, i mean also go to the website athpod.com we've also got samwise which is a blast and such great advice yes samwise and then also be you know be sure to check out our articles they're great Matt and Emily crushing it. Oh, yeah. Stargate. Week. Yeah. Stargate, other voices. There's so much stuff to do. Yeah. Oh, man, that Stargate that Stargate series is just chef's kiss. It's been so fun to read. It's a lot. It's a lot. He did so much work. <laughs> I looked at the word count at each draft as he was doing it, and I was like, my my jaw was just going further and further to the floor. Yeah. It's like, 
Dude, you've Good almost written a book. It's all just about how amazing James Spader is, right? I mean, yeah, I mean that's two of the articles are just James Spader. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. And then, yeah. you know, we're all very excited for Matt's next project of the Doctor Who series, uh, as he's going to write a huge article on all of that. Uh, if he's listening right now, he's going, fuck you. No, I'm not. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but we're just going to keep assuming that's what he's doing next because, you know, that's yeah, what no, he's going to do. Yeah, no, he gave me – he called me. He called me from overseas and was like, I'm going to do that Doctor Who series. I, I knew it. He's been lying to me this I whole mean, time. he's we, British. He's British. Who so else he, is going to do it? He doesn't have to do research. It's just in his blood. Yeah, he knows. <laughs> Okay, so that's it. We've done it all. I'm going to say happy, happy Halloween, 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 happy, happy Halloween. Uh, bye. 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 bye.